Kai Pacha with the weekly Pele report for July 10th, 2019. I'm out here in Roatan on uh, West Bay Beach. There's a coral reef out here. We're gonna go snorkeling today. I'm uh, doing a little family vacation. Got the kids and it's amazing. It's a little touristy though. I mean, I wanna get this video in here before the, <laughs> before the tourist boats cruise lines come in and this beach gets totally freaking packed man moon's in libra now gonna be going into scorpio on friday she goes into sagittarius sunday she moves on to capricorn and tuesday you know we have the great lunar eclipse lunar eclipse 24 degrees four minutes of capricorn yeah, and she's going to occult. You're not going to be able to see Saturn, not going to be able to see Pluto, right? You know, there's this whole, the moon is passing right across in the face of all of them. There's a little shot of the beach down there. Yeah, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of stuff going on. Can you see the fish? The fish are just hanging out in the water. Sun trine Neptune. Yeah. Is this sun trine Neptune or what? Ow! Thursday, Mer Mars comes into an exact square with Uranus. Of course, we know Mars goes slowly enough that it's going to be happening, you know, this whole week. So we can expect anything. And, you know, really what's going on big time, you know, uh, by Friday, and we've just got Saturn on the south node of the moon, opposite the sun on the north node of the moon, right? And then that sun, by uh, you know, by, by Sunday, the sun moves into an opposition with Pluto. So we're going to have a sun opposite Pluto. And then there's just kind of this gathering of Venus and the sun on the north node. Mercury coming back into Cancer for that grand finale. And the moon up there with Pluto and Saturn and the south node. Got this great big opposition happening. Basically, that's what I want to be talking about today. And, you know, v Venus is coming in on uh, next week. We'll be conjunct the north node of the moon exactly. Uh, Tuesday, she comes into this opposition with Saturn. So we've got, you know, Sun opposite Saturn and Pluto. Venus coming in to oppose Saturn and Pluto. All on the nodes with the lunar eclipse. And, I mean, woo! It's all going on. I don't know where I'm going to find a place to sit down and talk about this, but... I'm going to try. All right, I'm going to give this a go. I mean, the wind is blowing. I kicked everybody off the boat. They're they're all snorkeling so that I I can do the failure report. Ow! Oh man. Okay, so I you know, it's I would actually like to be in a place where I could sit still and concentrate and like really go deeply into this because this is a very powerful time, this lunar eclipse. And like I said, it's the polarity. This polarity is like pulling us apart. And Saturn on the south node of the moon opposite the sun and Venus on the north node is extremely powerful in that the work is really hard and difficult okay but the rewards can be great the rewards can be great what we have in, in evolutionary astrology we talk about any time planets are conjunct the south node of the moon it's a karmic time it's stuff coming up from the past in a state of three conditions. One is a state of fruition or a state of incompletion or a combination of both. So, you know, Saturn is the Lord of Karma. And this can be good karma or challenging karma. And that karma is about how mature we are, how able we are to be objective in our elder place of wisdom keepers and holders how patient how perseverant how able we are to endure and stand in our place in our integrity 
it set our goals and stick with them. Commitment is another aspect of Saturn and Capricorn. So we're, our commitment is being tested. So this can be a time where we are really required. It's like in order to get to that Sun, Venus, North Node and Cancer, I'm gonna get to that, okay? But like in order to like come home and feel good about ourselves and love ourselves wholly, fully, completely, and really nurture ourselves and feel emotional connection and feel that we are all part of the human family. This, it, like, it, it's requiring, Saturn is like the test, the test. Are you mature enough? Are you able enough? to be an elder, to be a wisdom keeper. And what is an elder, a wisdom keeper? It's someone who is able to objectively hold space, who is able to have the patience and to listen, to not react, to not take things too personally, to not over respond from this subjective I've been hurt or I am this or I'm feeling that or I need that we need to balance you know the good of the company the good of the world I mean it's like <laughs> we got some waves happening here man <laughs> these guys are going around we're not the only ones trying to scuba dive on this reef and you know we're not the only ones you know, on planet Earth. And this is where it comes into, you're not alone. Capricorn, Saturn, the 10th house has to do with, you know, hey, hey, um, yeah, video, video. Gracias. I need parking here, man. Yeah. You gotta share space out here on the reef with these guys, so. This is just exactly what I'm talking about, <laughs> you know. <laughs> we have to share space. This Cancer Capricorn axis, okay, is just a is it's a place where we are all the human family, and we all need to learn ways of communicating, of working together, of sharing space in order to not only like you know make the planet a better place. But it's having to do with what? The workspace. The workspace. Yes, we've all got our homes and families and we can sit in our private little rooms and everything is fine and we can contain our own space. But the fact of the matter is that most of us, okay, have jobs. <laughs> and most of us work with co-workers, with employees, Okay, you know, and, you know, and if you're in a public position or a public role or a place of management, you have to work with, you know, other people. And so there's like, we're, you know, the world puts us karmically with other people who are going to test us, who are going to challenge us, who are really going to just like, you know, be mirrors for our own unconscious shadow stuff. So whenever you're in a situation where you've got like stuff coming up or like people are, you know, coming up against you or people are, you know, challenging, you know, this situation, it's just an opportunity for you to like, you know, this is a reflection, this is a mirror, this is an opportunity I, how have I created this? What am I learning from this? I am learning to be more mature. I am learning to not be a baby, right? I'm learning to, you know, like not just freak out, right? I am learning to like come to the table and sit down and do nonviolent communication or sit down and do intentional dialogue with my partner if it's one-on-one, -on -one, right? You know, where you sit down and you share 
and not so much. And here's the difference between Capricorn and Cancer. One is judgment and one is feelings. You know, judgment is, you know, you know, pointing fingers, blaming, you know, not, you know, owning fully, you know, my role in creating an educational experience. <laughs> <laughs> you know, where we're making somebody else wrong, okay, and you know, then they have to get on the defensive and we get into like a whole big kind of a situation and it's an either or, win or lose, I'm either right or you're right, you know, and if you're right, I'm wrong, and if I'm right, you're wrong, and you get into these tassels of right and wrong with all of the judgment, but when you move into cancer, you move into feelings and these feelings are around that you know what we're we're all human we're all really trying to do our best we're all really growing and you know, like nobody is perfect and there are no wrong feelings if i'm sad mad or glad it's not wrong I'm feeling mad, sad, or glad. I, it's like our feelings come up and show us ourselves. They show us what we need. They show us what we are, you know, longing for, what we are afraid of, and how we can best, you know, nurture not only ourselves, but our offspring, our children, our projects, our future, our planet, our plants, our gardens. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's really protecting the innocent, protecting the vulnerable, and we all have this vulnerable, sensitive side within us. And we have all been hurt. And we are all coming from a wounded place. And so we react from our wounds. But when we come together and we listen to each other and we honor and respect that, you know, we're wounded, you're wounded, you're wounded, I'm wounded, everybody's wounded, and, and we're all trying. And th th this brings us together. And this is what makes each and every one of us more powerful, you know, more capable of having an influence, of making a difference in the world, of really doing something more than we could ever do alone. So, you know, it's like necessary to work together and it's also challenging to work together and we have to evolve consciousness, objectivity, and also what? Non-attachment. When we get too attached to a position, to a feeling, to being right, to having our way, when we get all like really bound up and attached to a particular point of view, Okay, this creates a dynamic, you know, where, you know, we are naturally going to be confronted. We are naturally going to be challenged, you know, in order to expand our point of view to include a greater reality. In this case, the realities of other people in our business, in our family in our country, on our planet. So it's, you know, this is kind of the task at hand these days. And the challenge, obviously the downside of this, the failure is if I can't do it. I'm not objective. I get upset and I, and I you know, I lash out. And I, and I don't, you know, really honor the other person or that they're wounded. And I don't realize that I'm wounded and I'm reacting because of my wound. So I'm not looking at myself and I am blaming them and I'm staying in a rigid, attached, 
perspective, a small point of view, small mindedness, narrow mindedness. This is, you know, Mercury retrograde is coming back. Okay, coming back through Leo, back into Cancer, helping us to reflect on our personal, subjective needs, feelings, and fears. Which brings me to what? The freaking mantra, man. <laughs> I'm going to take care and honor myself. Yeah? My needs and fears and desires. While also patiently listening to and working together with others. The age of Aquarius is calling us all out of our cancer shells, out of our little, you know, uh, personal homes and personal spaces and Saturn's demanding that we come out and participate okay in a greater movement to clean up the planet or to clean up the politics or you know to clean up the neighborhood so it's like we're all being expected or demanded or just like called to do more than just take care of ourselves and when we do more than just take care of ourselves we work with other people we face our shadow and we evolve. So it's all about the school of Gaia, the school of Mother Earth, the school of evolution is to become more than we currently are. Absolutely. So, <laughs> you know, these guys behind me are just like totally. I'm going to wrap it up, man. I hope you got that, what this lunar eclipse is about. You know, it's balancing, oh yeah, the prana and the apana. The prana is the in and upward. The apana is the down and outward. It's breathing. Not too much in, not holding back, not, you know, you know, getting freaked out. You know, that's what asthma is. Asthma is like fear, okay? It's like, <gasps> You know, it's like I, I'm holding in, I'm holding back, I'm 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 in fear. Okay, it's, it's so this is you know too much prana, too much in and up. Okay, and it has to be balanced with letting go, process of elimination, lower chakras. Yeah, so cancer, releasing the water, urinating, letting it out, releasing. Okay, and then prana. You know, pulling it in, okay, Sh strengthening the upper, you know, bringing it in and up. So I, I just did this uh, balancing the prana, apana. Uh, it's a kundalini yoga kriya. And uh, it's free as part of this uh, eclipse course that we're doing for New Paradigm Astrology. And, uh, and it's a support group for the eclipse season. Just four weeks long, but you know we're doing meditations online and gathering together. There's the, over a hundred people or something. You might want to check it out. You want to you know, join that, get this kriya, and do this for 30 days and balance the in and in and up and down and out. Don't get too down and out. Don't get too in and up. <laughs> Don't get constipated and don't get diarrhea. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know what? You got to stay in the center, babe. Eh? <laughs> All right. I should wrap it up before I get too silly. One more time. One more time. Yeah. I'm going to take care and honor myself. Okay. My needs, my fears, and desires. While also patiently listening to and working together with others. May you take care of yourself and work with others. Namaste. Aloha. So much fun. <laughs>